Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Corporate Giving Focus web seminar. We'd like to remind you that you are in listen-only mode during this broadcast, but we encourage you to ask questions at any time. And to do so, enter your question in the Q&A box, and that's located in the bottom right-hand side of the screen. Enter your question and press the send button, and your questions will be sent to today's panelists and addressed during the Q&A portion of this broadcast. And now it's my pleasure to turn this broadcast over to your host, Jose Fernandez, Director, GuideStar Exchange. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you. Um, thank you again for joining us for another GuideStar's uh, webinars for nonprofits. I just want to go over a few housekeeping items before we start. I want to make sure that everybody is aware that uh, WebEx will be sending an email tomorrow with the webinar slides. I uh, wanted to, to note that before we start. And also wanted to note the Twitter handle uh, for folks is uh, hash good 360 uh, if you wanted to participate in, in Twitter. Uh, another last housekeeping item, uh, we're going to work with uh, Melissa to uh, write up a blog post on trust.guystar.org for any uh, questions uh, that we weren't able to cover today. Uh, with that, I wanted to go over uh, a few items about the GuyStar Exchange first before I introduce our speaker. The GuyStar Exchange is a database of nonprofit information, and it was designed to connect nonprofits with uh, their current and potential supporters. Um, we do have millions of uh, people that come to GuyStar every day to learn more about nonprofits, and then we created the GuyStar Exchange as a way for nonprofits to enter their up-to-date information uh, and uh, make that connection with grant makers, potential donors, or other potential supporters. Uh, there are several uh, incentives uh, for joining the GuyStar Exchange. Uh, first of all, uh, membership is free. Um, Really, the nonprofit just has to come in, uh, claim their nonprofit report on GuideStar, and uh, complete their uh, nonprofit profile. As a benefit, the nonprofit will receive the GuideStar Exchange seal, uh, which is a symbol of transparency, and also a one-year uh, free subscription to GuideStar Premium. Uh, their up-to-date information is automatically distributed to a network of partners, and uh, the nonprofit also does get access to fundraising tools. And this is just a quick slide showing uh, some of the network of partners that do receive GuideStar information. Uh, so I want, just want to note that nonprofits uh, come into GuideStar.org and update their GuideStar report. And with that, I wanted to introduce Melissa Trumpauer. Uh, Melissa is the Executive Vice President of Marketing and Communications and strategic leadership for Good360. She is responsible for directly serving the organization's nonprofit network, uh, developing national partnerships that extend Good360's reach and impact, uh, promoting Good360's offerings to new nonprofit organizations, and communicating the organization's mission, vision, and programs. Melissa sits on Good360's leadership team uh, working closely with the president and CEO and other team members to develop and implement organization strategy for achieving its mission. Melissa previously held positions at IFES, uh, the American ba Bankruptcy Institute, the National Endowment of Democracy, and the National Wildlife Foundation uh, Federation. Sorry. And with that, I'd like to hand the slides over to Melissa. Great. Thanks, Jose. Um, uh, I'm just so happy to be here. Um, today, we're going to talk about product giving, which is what we do. Um, and I wanted to just give you a, a very short introduction to Good360. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization, and our focus is getting product donations for our nonprofit network. Uh, we currently have um, more than 14,000 nonprofits, and we're growing very quickly. Um, we work with a lot of the top companies who give us products, and um, I will tell you a very quick story about how we were founded because it sort of gives you a good sense of sort of the need and why we were founded in 1983. Um, what happened was essentially 3M, who is still a donor today, approached the United Way um, back in 1983 and wanted to donate about $12 million worth of 
copy machines and typewriters. Um, and of course, you know, the organization really wanted to accept those, but suddenly it became very clear that the logistics um, of, of actually distributing such a donation would be a huge challenge. So what they did is they created um, Gifts in Kind, who was incorporated the following year in 1984, um, and that's been our focus ever since. Um, so as you know, um, we actually changed our name in April, um, and thus we are Good360, but we have uh, taken the 28-year the history of Gifts in Kind and everything that we've learned and put that behind us. I will talk a little bit more about the, the name change a little later on. Um, here we go. I'm going to try to flip the slide here. There we go. Um, we're going to do a quick poll. I won't dwell on this, but we're going to put this up and just sort of to find out who's on, who's on the webinar today in terms of um, schools, nonprofits, and so forth. Um, and those results will pop up when they're, when they're done taking the poll. Okay, so let me just start with a little bit on corporate giving in general, and then I'm going to focus on product giving. Um, I thought it would be very helpful for, for you to sort of understand where product giving fits into the corporate sector. Um, and why companies give, really. I think it's, um, it's something nonprofits need to think a little bit about, which is, you know, how do businesses think and, and why do they make certain decisions that will really help you in your own decision making. Um, as you can see on this slide, um, I, I've actually pulled out um, the figures from the committee giving survey every year. Very helpful to look at. This is their, their survey from 2009. Well, it's actually 2010. It's based on um, surveys that were submitted in 2009. The 2011 edition is not out yet. So this is the most recent version. Um, and you can see that um, corporate cash giving is still um, larger um, than non-cash giving when it comes to non-healthcare companies. Um, and you can see at the bottom, I pulled out the healthcare companies because pharmaceuticals are such a huge part of in-kind contributions that it sort of skews the results. So if you're not interested in pharmaceuticals, um, this gives you a little bit better view. But um, it actually, if you if you add in the pharmaceuticals to this, it actually takes over the cash giving. It's actually larger. So, um, and you can see that that includes products. It includes donation of land, facility, pro bono services, and so forth. Um, let's see here. Okay. A couple trends just to think about in terms of corporate giving um, and why companies give. Um, the focus is really on community investment. Um, companies are no longer just giving to give. Um, they really do want to see an impact. Um, I, I won't focus on everything on this slide, but um, you know, a lot of companies are talking about corporate social responsibility. It's a, it's a trend that's been going on for a, quite a while now. It's actually moving even further down the line in terms of people, companies are really starting to talk about creating shared values, meaning, you know, developing um, their business processes so that there's an impact on the bottom line, but at the same time there's an impact on, on helping the environment and solving social issues. So it's really a big part of um, a lot of the top brands today. They really do think about their giving efforts. Um, and when I go through these things, so, so they're really tying all of their giving efforts to the bottom line. Okay, so they want to give, but they're very strategic, and they want to understand how that giving can actually out, actually help them in the long run. Um, so they're they're really spending a lot of time developing what it, what they're calling socially aligned business initiatives. Um, and again, it goes back to that triple bottom line. You know, they want to obviously, you know, come come back with um, a great bottom line, but they also want to see how how they're making an impact on the environment and any of the social issues they've identified is important to them. Um, so when I put sustainability up here, we'll talk a little bit about green in this presentation, but what I meant here is they also want to give to nonprofits that are going to be around for a while. They want to know that that investment is something that they're investing in an organization that's pretty solid and has a plan for the future. They're also really interested in working with nonprofits that are collaborating. Um, when they see that that nonprofits can come together and partner on some sort of an effort. Um, they're very interested in that. They like to see that now. And again, um, one of the things they're really interested in is just the last, lasting social impact. Um, and something I'll talk a bit about today is employee engagement. That is also a very, very hot topic for companies. They really want to understand how to get their employees more engaged in what they're doing to give back. Um, and I'll talk more to that. But um, all of these are, are things that 
are really good for business, um, and this is why, you know, they obviously want to help, but also at the same time, they're very, very interested in in the bottom line and how, how they can do both. Um, and just as, a, as something to throw out there, Cone did a survey um, last year just to prove that, that this is good business, um, and they surveyed Americans, and they asked them after they – heard about a company's commitment to a certain social issue, what, what did they do? 45% of them actually considered purchasing a product. 43% of them actually did purchase a product from the company. 43% told a family member or friend about that company or that product. And then 28% intentionally, intentionally paid more attention to that company going, for, going forward. So Product giving, okay? It's a little bit different than just corporate giving and cash giving. And so I'm going to go through a few slides just to sort of talk about why companies give. Um, one of the things that they deal with is excess inventory. So, and what I mean by that is unsold products. It could be buybacks. It could be return products that are perfectly good. Um, and there's a lot of different options for them. Um, and this is something we think a lot about in product giving. So the first option is liquidation. How, how do they get every single dime out of, out of that product? Um, so that's an option. Um, the second option was shipping it back. So if they've taken it out to another location or it's a, a distribution center, they will have to ship it back to wherever it is that they're going to either liquidate it or whatnot. So that's, that's an option, but it's expensive, okay? So if they're shipping product that hasn't sold, back and forth, it not only is it that expensive, it also adds to the carbon emissions and everything else that they're they have goals around. Again, not a great uh, not a great solution. Um, they could destroy or dispose of it. Um, and we found that that's not a uh, again, that's not a really great solution for companies anymore. Um, a couple about a year ago there were a few companies that there were Facebook um, groups that form because companies had been seen putting good product into trash bins and there were pictures online and it can be a complete PR nightmare for a company so they're they're really not seeing that as an option anymore. Um, I'm sure there's some that do it but um, it's it's something they try to avoid. And then the last one is donation and that's what we're going to talk about today. That that is a solution and we're going to talk a little bit about why that makes sense for companies. Um, as you can see with the next slide, you know, donating product versus cash, it's a very tangible connection to your brand. So the recipients of that product, in many cases, are going to know that, that it came from your company and that, you know, that, that, that the company gets some, some um, you know, great publicity for it. So that's one thing. Um, another thing companies think about is they like to give back where their employees live and work. Um, again, it comes back to that employee engagement. So they are um, looking to do it in those communities because they have a presence in that community, um, and they want to make sure that everything that they're doing is see being seen as a, as a positive for that community for a lot of reasons. Uh, recruit and keep talent. This is getting back to that employee engagement piece that I've mentioned earlier, which is a huge um, goal for companies. They realize that if their employees – see this company as doing good things for their community, that they're going to be um, ambassadors for their company. They're going to feel good about who they work for. They're going to say great things about the company. There's a lot of terrific surveys and research um, to back this up. Um, I have a, um, a figure up here from Cone, 89% of those familiar with their company's cause programs feel a strong sense of loyalty to their employees. Um, and 72% percent of Americans want their employee, employers to do more to support a cause or social issue. Um, so that's another reason why they give. Corporate cost savings. This is directly, all these are directly related to product giving, and this one is particularly related to product giving. 170E3 is part of the federal tax code. What that means is it's, it's a code um, that, that was created just for product donations, okay? So what that means is if a company gives and they can they can prove that they gave to organizations that serve the ill, needy, or youth, um, then they can actually get a bigger tax break than what they would normally get. And that's twice the cost of the production of, of the goods manufactured. So that's a huge perk for companies. If you know about that and they know about that, they understand that the, the tax break is even bigger for, for doing product donations that actually go to those purposes. Um, being green, I mentioned that briefly, you know, um, they don't, it's disposing and putting products in a landfill is not really an option anymore, um, and it's a great, 
thing for companies that figure out how to do how to donate their product. Okay, it it's an alternative to putting it in the landfill. Number one, cuts down on their overall corporate waste, and then the third thing, it actually reduces the cost because it's very expensive to put something in a landfill. So um, some of the companies we've worked with have found that they've actually saved a lot of money by donating. Um, not only was it the right thing to do. Um, and something good they can talk about, but they actually saved a lot of money as well because it was more costly to put it in the landfill. And again, here's another proof point. 89% of Americans hold companies accountable for ensuring proper product disposal and recycling. So making sure that they actually um, get rid of their unsold inventory in a very responsible way. Okay, here's another poll. Before I move on to that, Looks like, not surprisingly, we actually have 94% of the groups online today are nonprofits, um, and that doesn't surprise me at all. Um, we do have 2% that are schools as well. Um, and so we'll put up another poll here. Um, just curious um, of those of you online who are nonprofits, you know, um, have you have you received product donations in the last few months? Um, just curious, and when that comes up, I'll give you the results. And so not surprisingly, we're here to talk from the nonprofit perspective about what's in it for you. Why, why should you consider product donations? Um, some are very clear. We've had quite a few nonprofits actually tell us that um, in some cases they survived during the economic downturn um, in 2009, 2010 because of products that actually were, allowed them to stretch their budgets, and some of them actually were able to survive because of that. Um, so it, it also enhances your program. So, for example, if you have a job training program and you can find a way to provide dress clothing for your clients as they come out of your program, that's a huge way to enhance your programs and to give them that extra boost to, to really make the program work for them. Um, you can use it for a grant match. So when you see, um, when you're filling out a grant, in some cases, not all, but in some cases, grants ask that you provide a match. Um, and in some cases, they'll allow you to do an in-kind match. And so we, you might want to consider some of the product donations you've received as that match for you. Um, it's also a great way to build donor relationships. So, okay, so, you know, you first get products from a company and you, you respond to them and you explain how you use them and, you know, you provide them a lot of, with a lot of information on how this really improved your programs and helped your clients then, you know, it opens them up to understanding who you are and, and what you're doing and the possibility of actually supporting you in other ways. Um, and then number five is something people don't think a lot about, but um, if you're able to get products and you really are stretching your budget and being very creative about how you're, how you're actually um, getting by day to day and cutting things out and doing more, then it, it really does demonstrate that you're being fiscal be fiscally responsible and that you're showing good stewardship of, of the resources that people have provided you to do your program. So for a lot of reasons, it makes sense. Um, and so one thing we do recommend is at some point to do a needs assessment when you're looking at getting products, just because there may be needs that you don't even know about. There's obvious, there are very obvious needs that you'll know right away, oh gosh, we really need this. But if you really talk to your clients and your team, you know, you may find that there's some other things that you could actually cut out of your budget and just replace with an in-kind product donation. Um, another good thing that people don't think about is if you have it in writing, what your product needs are, um, sometimes you have to say no to a donor if it's a product that doesn't make sense for you um, to accept and it's going to take up extra room or whatnot. You know, it's a lot easier to tell somebody no when you actually have your list on a piece of paper and you can then respond and say, thank you so much. That's really not in, in no, not part of our needs. However, here's a list of the things we do need. It's a lot easier to say no that way because you can show that you're being very, you've actually put a lot of thought into it and you're being very strategic. Um, so it does, it does, it's very valuable to know that and sort of check in periodically. We actually do have a part of our online um, portal, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, a there is a place for you to submit your needs online. And this fall, we're actually going to, um, launch a, a very innovative nonprofit needs tool that you could use for free to sort of check in on your product needs. Okay, so before we move on to the next poll, let me just look at the one we had. Okay, so we had about 35% of you said that you received some product donations in the past month. That's pretty good. In the past six months, 27%. In the past year, 17%. And then 20% of you said never. So there's, there's some potential there. Um, 
for a lot of you to either increase what you're getting or to get something for the first time. So uh, let's take a look at this, the, the, the next poll, which is it's to the needs thing. So if you know off the top of your head things that you definitely need, tell us right now. We'll take a look at who's online right now and what the product needs are. Um, and this is the kind of thing we think a lot about at Good360, and we'll talk more about that. Okay, so just a few capacity considerations, and this just depends on if you decide you're going to really go all out and bring in a lot of products. Um, again, that's what we do all the time, so it's it's our sweet spot. So um, your organization, things that you might want to think about, um, you know, how are you going to store the product? You know, how are you going to transport it back and forth or pick it up if you're doing that? Um, how are you going to ensure that you're following through on any restrictions that the donor said they, they want it used for this purpose or that purpose or not for this purpose or whatever? Um, reporting on, on those donations, making sure that you're keeping track of, of how, you know, counting-wise and so forth, that it's on your 990 and so forth. All things that you should just at least think about, um, and that's something that Good360, we actually are, are, we do webinars periodically and touch on all of these things. Um, okay, so let's let's talk a little bit about Good360 in general, why we changed our name, um, and then I'm going to dive into what we do with nonprofits so you get an idea of who we are and how we might help you. Um, we did change our name in April. It's, very, it's brand new. It's been a little over a month now. Um, and the reason is because we're, we're a very different organization than we were when we were Gifts and Kind. Um, and we actually are, are – we have a, a – a new innovative online um, catalog and um, portal that we're we're actually improving later this summer that that really is going to just hopefully change the game for us in terms of the impact impact that we can actually provide for everybody. Um, impact is is at the core of what we want to do. We want to be able to provide impact data on what we're doing for nonprofits and how nonprofits are helping more people. Um, also, really being um, you know, the leader in collecting product needs of nonprofits, you know, allowing you, helping you do that, figure out what your needs are, and then it allows us, you know, um, to go out and serve those needs and to really talk to our partners and say we're finding that more – so, for example, last fall we did a diaper campaign because, you know, we do surveys now and then with our network, and we realized that diapers were a huge need, and we actually did do a campaign that is still going on. Um, and so those are the th kind of things that we do with that information is we, we're trying to figure out how to work with our partners to fulfill all of those needs. Um, things that are different from the old gifts and kind, um, we, there is no cost for registration. It actually used to cost you a membership fee to be part of the network. It's now free. You can register online for the first time. Um, last year we, we began doing that for the first time with GuideStar's help, so you can actually do it. Most people, if they have a 990 that's updated, they can do it in about five minutes. If not, then we do it. We do have a manual process for that. Um, and the old and kind of it pretty much was pallets and trucks, and now we do things in cartons. So we actually offer things in smaller quantities for those smaller charities so that we can really serve everybody. Um, just a couple of our um, – this, this is just a few of our, our corporate partners, people we've worked with for a long time and for the most part. It's not comprehensive. We work with H&M, 3M, Sears, JCPenney, Tempur-Pedic, Staples, Mary Kay. I won't go on, um, but I did want, you, want to give you a, a sense of, of who works with, with us, who provides the products. Um, and just so you understand the connection, why do, why do companies work with us? Um, again, it goes back to that story of 3M. You know, we were able to take a giant donation for them and distribute it across the country to qualified nonprofit organizations who are, who are doing good work in the community. Um, and that's what we continue to do today. Um, and in addition to that, um, obviously we're making sure that the nonprofits that we work with are qualified and that they're, again, doing the, the work. The, the second thing on this list that's very, very important, and I'll go through this, is we actually work with all those nonprofits to explain the do's and don'ts of using the donated products because there are restrictions on how you use them um, related to the 170E3. So for the companies that are getting that accelerated tax break, you know, we do go through and make sure that the nonprofits understand what the what the rules are on the use of the product. So we, we find a lot of creative ways to distribute. We actually have some very um, 
innovative logistic partnerships to um, help us cut down the cost of distribution as well. So for example, um, we work with the American Trucking Association now, um, and they're helping us um, do some donated transportation as well so that we can cut down our administrative fees, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, but the reason that companies work with us is because they know we're, we're a kind of a full service solution for them. Um, they know that it's going to go out to a good charity, um, and they know that it's going to get delivered, and, and they, we do everything. So we get tax, we provide them with tax documentations, we, we help set up programs for them, and so forth. So that's kind of how we fit into the puzzle. And who, who do we serve? Okay, so we, you know, non, obviously nonprofit organizations, schools, um, Here's a, a list of examples, and at the bottom you see our national partners. These are groups that um, have a partnership with us um, to bring in their groups to benefit from our programs. Um, but essentially, just so you know, we, we find that the, the groups that have, find the most value in us are direct service providers. So um, that's the sweet spot for us. So if you're working directly in the community to, to help kids, or you have a shelter, or your transitional housing program, any of that, um, it's a good fit for us um, because you'll see with the, pro the kinds of products that we offer, that's really the group that would find the most value, although we have office supplies. So, you know, there's value for everybody, but um, just wanted to make that point. Um, so when we get back to the rules for donation use, this is related to the 170E3. This is federal law, and it means that in order for us to give the tax documentation to the donating company, we have to make sure that the, donor, the recipient nonprofit understands um, how they can use the product. So their, their organization must be dedicated to serving the ill, needy, or youth. There's two ways they can really use the product. Um, they can give it directly to a person in need um, through their programs, which is how most of our product gets used. Um, and the second thing they could do is if it's, if it's within their organization and they're using it as part of their operation and their mission is to help people in need, then yes, they can use it for their operation. So obviously that's where office supplies come in and technology and all of those kinds of things. Um, you can, they cannot be used right now to, for fundraisers. It can't be sold or exchanged for cash or anything like that. Um, that's again according to the law um, in order for that, that company to get the tax break. You know, we cannot use them for fundraisers, raffles, or auctions, or given to volunteers or staff members. Okay. Okay, so how do you get products from Good360? Um, there's three main ways that you get products. Um, you can go online and look at our catalog, which I'll show you in just a moment. Um, you can um, request products directly online. All you have to do is go on. It's like an e-commerce platform. Um, and you go in and you can see what we have. Um, and then we have about, um, I guess, nine warehouses across the country. Um, so we do take in large amounts of product. We break it down in some cases when it makes sense. And then we distribute out to the nonprofits that have requested it. Um, we do have one-time donations that come available in communities all over the country and sometimes in other countries as well. And what we do is the, then we, we have a lot of different ways that we'll kind of reach out to nonprofits in that community if it's a direct pickup to say who, who's interested in this donation. It's a one-time opportunity. To, you know, so for example, um, last year we had a, a huge donation of brand new pottery in New York City. Um, so we just pinged our network and said who, who's, who in Manhattan is interested in this. And I think it was like 30 cartons of brand new pottery from a camera shoot. Um, camera shoots are actually a, a great source of, of product donations, believe it or not. We get quite a few of those calls. And we had a local um, housing group come by and pick it up. Um, it was great. It was a great donation. Um, and then the last part is that we actually work with a, a lot of retailers. Um, and we, we, what we do is we match uh, retail stores with a local nonprofit organization. And then that nonprofit throughout, it's used, typically you could do it one time if you prefer, but um, a lot of groups actually partner for an entire year. And whenever there's a donation, they, they go by to the store and they pick up the donation. And there's no, you know, the, the great thing about it is in, it's in your community. You're creating these relationships with the store. Um, so you're not paying for the shipping. Um, and you can pick it up. But, you know, the other side of, to the coin is you don't really know what you're getting. So, um, you know, we have a great program with Bed Bath & Beyond, um, which is terrific. And, you know, they we have great stories of nonprofits that have been really happy. So. Um, so it's it's one of those things where it's it's a great program and you get some good stuff and, and on the other side is you it's a little unpredictable. 
Um, so, um, and again, there are administrative fees for this. The reason being is the way that we're set up. You know, we do all the, we actually do all the back end. Um, we do the matches for the stores. Um, and we actually do all the cost of the shipping and handling and, and the warehousing and so forth is all built into that. So um, it's a good deal, though. Um, we, we do everything that we can to make sure that those administrative fees are as low as possible, and I'll, I'm happy to answer any questions about that. Um, products that we offer, one thing I'd like to say about our warehouse inventory and our online catalog is that that product um, – is very um, it moves a lot. It's almost like a, a filing. <laughs> if you know what that is, you know you could go in there every day and it's going to be different. Um, so one thing we recommend is that if you are going in there um, and you see something you want, try to try to get it as soon as possible. There are some things that are always going to be there um, or or there on a regular basis, and you don't have to worry. And the more you the more you come into it, you'll the more you'll see what's changing and what's not, and what moves quickly. But um, when you get started, it's, if you see something you really want, it's probably good to jump on it and do it more quickly. On the other side of the slide here, we have um, we do have some ongoing programs um, with um, Citrix and Novell, Autodesk, which is a very high-end um, engineering architecture software that some of our housing programs use. It's a very high-value thing that you get for a very low administrative fee. Um, Mattel has a great program with us, um, FileMaker, so these are some technology programs, but those are those are things that we always have pretty much. Um, and then these are our retail partners. Um, Borders um, is still donating. We're, we're actually not actively matching them right now because they're in bankruptcy, but they are still donating to the existing partners right now. Um, Bed Bath & Beyond, Home Depot, Disney, um, these are the groups that we have um, the ability to match you within the community. So it's a very unique program. Okay, so what I was going to do real quick, if I can, here is to pull up the catalog and to show you what we have right now. And to show you also, um, while it's coming up, um, how uh, how you can actually search for uh, retail partners online. Uh, um, and just so you know, for those of you who um, have worked with Gifts and Kind in the past, this is our catalog right now. It's under good360.org. Um, if you want uh, more information about the organization period, um, if you go to um, either this, this right here, uh, that will give you more information. Um, you can also go to giftsandkind.org, um, and that provides a lot of information. This summer, we're unveiling a whole new website that is being built as we speak with a lot of new functionality, um, which I'll talk about. Um, but wanted you to be clear that that's what you can do if you're looking here. So this mapping feature down here, you can't see the map right now. It's probably still loading. But this is how you can find um, partners, partners in your neighborhood. Um, we have a feature where you can put your zip code in, and I'll try it. I'm not sure if it's going to work from here. Hold on. Let's see if it pulls up. But this is a map that will tell you what's in your community. And, and that shows one-time donations as well. So you could, do, you could do this for your retail partnerships. Um, it doesn't look like it worked too well. So I'm going to expand. You can see you can expand the radius here. Okay, I want local pickups, which also means partnerships. Um, put your zip code in and just do a search. So what's in, within 25 miles of my organization? Okay, so you can see here that in the zip code, which is uh, in the D.C. area, because that's where, lo where we are located, um, you can see that there's a lot of Home Depot stores looking for partners, and the annual match means that they – are looking for a 12 months part somebody who's going to do it for 12 months, um, and it's not a one-time pickup. You can see there's a store that's already matched, um, Pottery Barn already matched, Puzzle and Cookbooks. That's a one-time pickup, so I guess you're picking up cookbooks and magazines. Um, so if gas is already matched, um, William Sonoma is looking for a 12-month partnership. So there's a lot of Home Depots you can see here, and some Pottery Barns and so forth. 
Um, so that gives you an idea of, of what you do. It's, it's pretty quick and easy. You can do that as often as you want. We also send out notices of any kind of new things, new, new donors coming in um, as well. Um, and then if you look up here, um, you can see the different categories of products that we have. Um, so we have home goods, building supplies, technology, clothing, office supplies, other toys, so um, personal care. Um, so if you go to clothing, kids clothing, I'll hit on that. Um, you can see. Okay. So, okay, so there's, you could see there's some clothes here. There's costumes. Um, wait for that to come up. Um, we do send out a weekly notice as well, um, every week. So if you're in the network, um, you'll get a, a weekly, it comes out every Wednesday. It's called our product donation update. It will give you the latest products that we have. It will give you any news from the network, anything new that you need to know. Um, and um, you can also sign up for RSS feeds. You can sign up for Twitter. So there's a lot of different ways you can stay in touch with us and hear about the latest products if you're interested. So this is one step ahead. You can see, I can, if I can, I'll try to sign in so you can see the administrative fee on this. It provides you with how it comes. It comes in a pallet or a carton or a truck in some cases. Um, okay, so you can see that you're paying $450 here for a pallet. Um, it's actually worth $7,500 um, because you get, let's see here, 300 costumes um, about for a pallet. So that's that's not too bad. I mean, you do have to pay for the, the shipping costs, but, you know, in the end, if you're looking to, get 300 costumes for your kids, that's not too bad. <laughs> so um, so anything else here? Let's see here. Um, see, you, you do see some items that we're trying to get rid of here, clearance items. Um, anything that, you know, a lot of cleaners, there's cosmetics, there's personal care products. Um, there are, are a lot of building supplies um, that come through as well. There's diapers. Um, so. Uh, you know, we do have diapers, which is something that, again, that we we knew we needed, so we went out and did the most that we could to get them. So we're trying to do that as much as possible. So we do ask our network to provide a lot of a lot of feedback on that. So let me hold on. Oh, I think I just got out of my network here. There we go. Okay. So let me go back to where I was. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let me get out of the web browser. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go back, and I'm trying to figure out, Greg, if you could help me get back in after the web browser here. Um, let's see here. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. Um, So we did the short demo, and a couple things I just want to talk about what's coming. I keep mentioning that there's all this new functionality coming at the end of the summer. Um, we are going to do um, several new things for our nonprofits. Um, we're going to have, like I said, a more robust way for you to go in and sort of tally what your product needs are. Another thing that's very, very exciting is you're going to be able to go into this catalog, find something that you need, and if you don't want to pay, you can't afford the $400 for those costumes, for example. Um, to ship them to your organization. Something new that we're going to do um, for everybody is, is that we're going to allow you to then use it as a fundraising tool. So what you can do is you can, you'll be able to go in and create a wish list. So if you see those costumes, you can say, oh my gosh, we really need those costumes. We don't have the $400 in our budget. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it in, we're going to create a wish list. Um, and then what we can do is we can send this wish list out to our supporters in the community and say, hey guys, you know, send it out via email, 
we really need these costumes. It's a great deal, $7,500 value, but we can get them for $400 just to get, the, get them shipped to our organization. Can you help us covering this, cover the shipping costs? And so what you can do is use it as a fundraising tool, and that's coming later this fall, or actually late summer, so we're talking late August, early September when that will be available. Um, and we're also driving more individuals online to support nonprofit organizations and to help them cover the cost because that's always been a challenge for us. Is we're a very small nonprofit organization. We have about 40 people. We actually distribute hundreds of millions of products every year. Um, and we're just trying to find more innovative ways to make sure that our nonprofits are getting the products they need. Um, and so we're going to be letting individuals come in and just find their favorite nonprofit and their favorite school and go into those wish lists and just support them and have a tangible way to give back. Um, so I think it's exciting. Um, and the other thing that we're going to do, and I'm trying to move this slide, but it seems like it's, there we go. And I just did that. And we talked about this. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to allow nonprofits to build an online profile that will be seen by everybody, including donors and individual donors, um, which is exciting. So, okay, the la we're going to our last poll, and we'll wrap up for questions. Um, it looked like the last poll that we did, um, the top thing was office supplies. That's not a surprise to me because every there isn't a nonprofit out there that doesn't need office supplies. So if you're covering a, a wide range of different types of groups, the fact that office supplies comes up at the top is not a shock. Um, okay, so the last poll is just, if you if you all have fundraising goals for your organization, you know, what percentage of your goals include in-kind donations? Just curious, you know, is it 5%? Is it, is it a small percentage of what you're aiming to get, or is it a larger percentage? Is it 50% of what you're trying to bring in, you know, in terms of a full, a full fundraising goal of cash slash products slash, you know, pro bono services, so forth. What, what does that look like for your organization? Okay, and then we always, we always say this when you, you know, and this is something most nonprofits know a lot about, that when you work with anybody that's helping you out, whether it's volunteers or a donor that's supporting your organization, you know, the more, the more you can do to provide them with feedback about the impact, um, the more, um, the more chance you're going to have to work with them going forward. And it's the same with, with Good360. We do um, look to share, to get stories from all of our nonprofits about how, how they've used the product, what the impact has been on one life or many, um, any kind of media coverage that you've had about the programs. Um, and, any, and it's really great to get products or photos of the products being used because um, our donors love to see that. So we, we always ask, so if you're in the network currently or you plan to join the network, we ask that you share as much information as you can because that allows us to do a lot more and to get even more donations for, an, for our entire network. It's, it's great. So we encourage you to do that. And with that, it is 145. I'm going to, um, I'm going to end this, this way by giving a special offer, um, to uh, to anybody who wants to register. It is free registration. It takes you about five minutes online. You can see here that this is our registration. You are required to put in the EIN number. You can search online to find your EIN if you don't know it off the top of your head. That link I'm going to read out loud because it got cut off in the slide deck here. It is good360.org slash guidestar webinar. And if you go to that link, for the first five new nonprofits that register, we'll send you a free case free carton of, of post-it notes um, just to try to get people um, in, in, you know, in the door. But again, it's free, it's, it's easy to do, um, and it allows you to sort of see what we have, you know, for our nonprofits. It allows you to get notices and updates about everything that's new um, and um, welcome any of you to, to join in and give us feedback. So. So with that, Jose, if you want to open it up to questions or get, see, see through any questions we've had, that'd be great. Sure, yeah, there's uh, plenty of questions here. Just a few uh, housekeeping items again. Uh, there were a few folks that were uh, noting that they were unable to see the slides. We apologize for that. We just want to uh, remind folks that WebEx will be emailing slides tomorrow. Uh, and then for any questions that we cannot get to, uh, we will have a blog post at trust.guystar.org uh, coming up soon. So we did have several questions come up, 
and I'm kind of going through them right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, we had a, a couple questions regarding uh, international donations. Uh, one was, can we distribute products we receive overseas? Yeah, I mean, that that varies per donor. So, I mean, obviously that falls in the donor restrictions. Um, we, we distribute, we work with quite a few organizations that distribute product overseas through our network. Um, you just need permission to do that, and you'll when you go into the catalog, it'll actually tell you um, if it's not allowed or not, you know, so you'll be able to tell, okay, this is not allowed to go overseas. Um, so you'll know that in advance, but yes, it, it is, it's sort of donation by donation. Um, some of them are allowed to go overseas and others are not. It just depends. Okay. And uh, there was a follow-up question to that uh, regarding uh, whether the uh, tax break applies to products that are donated internationally. I guess that, that's probably a question more for the donor, really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I don't I, – I, I guess I hesitate to answer that question. I might be getting in above my head here. But okay. I think as long as it's donated to to El Nini or youth that it probably is, but that's probably a question to verify with your auditors. Sure. Um, let's see. A uh, very quick and easy question is, do you have a Facebook page? If so, uh, what is it? <laughs> yes, we do. And it's actually Facebook slash um, good360.org. And we just started that a week ago because we had the challenge of changing our name and we tried a couple different things and it didn't work. So we actually had to recreate a page about a week ago. So um, you'll be one of the first to go in and like us if you do that. All right, awesome. Uh, let's see, a couple of geography questions, uh, noting where do you deliver uh, within the U.S. Uh, we had a lot of folks uh, from L.A. that were asking uh, about warehouses or delivery within L.A., but I guess just brought it, brought in it out uh, for everyone's uh, sake. Yeah, I mean, there's no place in the United States, really, that we don't deliver. It's hard, harder to do it in Alaska and Hawaii, obviously, and, and some of the other areas. But in general, if you're in the continental U.S., um, we'll pretty much deliver to you. And we do have a – we actually have a, a really active warehouse in the Reno, Nevada. So if they're asking about California, we have a very strategic warehouse for, for uh, anybody that's in California. We have a lot of nonprofits in California. Great. Thank you. Uh, let's see, uh, a couple of folks that came in late for the webinar, so if you can just repeat real quick, uh, what are the eligibility requirements to join? Sure. Um, we are looking for nonprofit organizations um, that have, uh, and, and as general, if you can prove you're a 501c3 or a school and that you have a file 990 so that we can kind of tell what your annual revenue is. That's that's pretty much what we ask for. We do have requirements around um, how the product's used. So we typically work with nonprofits that are serving the ill, needy, or youth according to the federal tax code. Great. And I guess the nonprofit should probably uh, maybe check uh, the IRS uh, website to see what is defined as e ill, needy, ill, or yeah. needy. They can do that or they can email me as well. I'm happy to provide some feedback on that because we, we've been dealing with that in vetting charities for a long time, so we can we can talk to them ourselves. But there is a lot online that, that really dives into 170E3 and what that entails. Okay. Uh, so long as we're uh, uh, noting your contact information on screen, I uh, just want to let folks know there are a lot of very specific questions uh, coming online. Uh, I do see questions, for example, one organization that has an outstanding payable, they had a, a specific question whether they would still qualify. I would say uh, please email uh, uh, Melissa uh, so she can get some more information about you in order to answer that question uh, a, a little bit more, more correctly for you. Um, question about fees and how much does it cost uh, for a fee or annual membership? Yeah, there's no fee. Um, I did say that in our in our um, in the presentation. We used to have a registration fee that was $150 a year to join. We no longer have that. It's now free to join. Um, you know, you just need to qualify and make sure that you're in a good in nonprofit and you have the 990 if if that's appropriate. We obviously take faith-based groups as well. So if you don't have a filed 990, 
um, we, we do have a manual process that we'll go through with you to get you um, approved for the network. So there is no fee to join. Okay. Thank you for that. And we're also getting a lot of folks here uh, letting us know what they want. Uh, they need wheelchairs. They need sports equipment, uh, tons of stuff. So I'm sure you, you'll get these uh, later on, uh, Melissa, uh, uh, forwarded to you. I just want to make you aware of that. That's great. Uh, let's see. Another question here. Uh, can you provide uh, any specific examples of products that organizations have received and how much they saved? Yeah, um, an example I used to use in one of my presentations um, was uh, just off the top of my head was a, a community action agency in West Virginia that actually got um, insulation worth about eighteen thousand dollars, and she paid about a thousand for it, um, and that was through our network. So um, that was a few years ago, um, but that, that's the one I used to say, which is the one that comes top top of mind in my head, but. Um, it varies, I, I mean, honestly, in how much people save. But you, we do put in the catalog um, sort of a compare at component. We do a lot of research online to sort of see what's the cost of it to ship it to you versus what people are paying. Because uh, you're not paying for the product, let's be clear. You're, you're, the product's donated, so you're, what you do pay for online is the, the fee to get it to you. Um, and so we do compare it online so you can kind of see um, the value, and of course, you can obviously do your own research as well if, if you prefer to do that. Great. Uh, there were a lot of questions regarding donation quantity, uh, so I'll start off with this one, then some follow-up questions, um, and that is, uh, are there any quantity limitations uh, for donations? And, and I'm, I'm guessing they're asking about uh, if they're doing a one-time donation, but I guess maybe you can also answer it throughout the year maybe, if possible. Yeah, most of the time there's not a, a restriction unless it's a, a, I mean, every now and then there's a, there's something that comes in that we know a lot of nonprofits need it, and we may put a restriction on it so that we can, everybody can get a little bit of it, you know what I mean, um, so that one organization doesn't, you know, take the whole thing quickly. Um, most of the product, that doesn't happen very often. Um, most of the time, um, you know, you can take as much as you want. You know, if, if you can, if you have the capacity to take it, you know, you could take it. Um, so rarely, we we try not to do that. Again, sometimes we'll do that if if we feel like we've heard a lot of need out there, and we know there's a ton of groups that have been waiting, and we'll we'll do that. The other side of that is every now and then we've had a we've had a few donors that have said, you know. Um, we we don't want a nonprofit to get more than this per quarter, and we've monitored that, that for them as well, um, mostly because they had concerns about, you know, how it was being used, and they wanted to make sure nonprofits only got a certain amount. So that does come up now and then, but most of the time you don't – there are no restrictions. Great. Thanks. Uh, and, and really a follow-up, uh, I guess, on, on the opposite side of the spectrum. Uh, a nonprofit that doesn't need a whole pallet, um, are they able to, to pick and choose if they only want, say, just 50 uh, shirts or whatever instead of a whole pallet of shirts? Well, the closest thing we can do for that is, is we do break things down into cartons whenever possible. So there's quite a few things that you'll see online that are in carton, which is a box, essentially, which is a much smaller quantity. And, and on some rare occasions, we've actually had pieces, which is a one piece. You could actually, you know, if, it, if the size, if it makes sense with the size, we will do that periodically. We're doing that a lot more today than we ever used to because we realize there are a lot of smaller groups in our network, and we've done everything that we can to make sure that everybody, no matter what size, can benefit from what we do. Um, so we don't let, let you say, I want 12 T-shirts um, because it's just not how it works. We couldn't. We could not cost effectively do it that way. Um, so, um, okay. yeah, I already said. Great. Well, let's see. We're um, we're getting close to the end, so I just want three uh, three more questions, uh, very short. Um, I do see a lot of questions regarding the annual match. Um, one is explaining what is an annual match, and and others that that were um, uh, a bit. Uh, asking whether annual match meant it's an annual membership uh, fee, for example. So if you can just clarify what an annual match is, real quick. Yeah, the annual match is is not a it's not the membership. What that means is you're already in our network. You've already been approved um, to be part of the nonprofit network. 
what that means is a, um, a match typically means that you have decided to partner with a retail store in your neighborhood for a year. And there is a, a, a administrative fee to do that just because we run a program with about 6,000 stores and we have about uh, several staff people who that's all they do is to sort of manage the customer service element of that, um, matching stores, dealing with any customer service issues that run up. But so what that means is you would be matched to a specific store in your community for it, it could be a one-time match where you've said, I just want to pick up product once. It could be three months, but most of them are for, uh, for a 12-month period where you just go whenever there's a donation to pick it up. Great. Uh, and then uh, second to last question here, we have a lot of folks uh, asking about their uh, C3 status that they're waiting for. Um, and, and I think we can both easily answer uh, that question if they're waiting for a C3 status um, in, in order to uh, – the person would have to be on, on GuideStar, correct, um, uh, in order to, to start the application process. Um, is, is, is that correct, or is there any other way to start the application process? No, I mean, uh, we are usually waiting for, for them to get that that in, so it would be better to go through GuideStar and, and start the process there, and then as soon as you get confirmation, you can start the process with Good360. And it's pretty much a matter of having the 990 on, on GuideStar. Right. IRS 990. Uh, and then the, the last one is just uh, any parting words as we close out the webinar here. Um, no, would love would love feedback from anyone that has any other questions. Um, you know, we are very excited um, about this year because um, later later this year, again in or late August and early September, we are going to offer even more for our nonprofits, and we're very excited about that. So we we invite you to join in for free, come in, see what we're all about, and you know, be part of of what we're going to do later this year. Um, but again, love feedback. If you have questions, feel free to follow up. And just the last thing would be to, to remind you, I read out the webinar that's on the slide right now, which is, is cut off. If you're going to register, it's good360.org slash GuideStar webinar. <laughs> thank um, you for that. I was just going to mention that. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, thank you, uh, Melissa, for uh, uh, doing the webinar for us and letting the nonprofits know about your organization. Uh, and thank you again to the nonprofits. Uh, I want to remind them that they can uh, come to GuideStar to register for GuideStar um, and also go on to good360.org uh, GuideStar slash GuideStar webinar to register for Good360. And there will be an uh, email tomorrow from WebEx with the slides. Uh, with that, I'd like to say uh, good afternoon to everyone, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, this concludes your web seminar. You may now disconnect and have a wonderful day.